Hey folks, welcome to today's video. Today I want to take my Wazoo cachet cap and show you uh, some of the things from Wazoo's adventure kit that I keep in my cachet cap. And the project that I want to do today is I want to basically make a fishing pole similar to the one that I used in Mongolia. I'm going to use uh, Wazoo's wire saw and cut down a sapling and create a fishing pole and hopefully go to the river and potentially catch a catch a bass or something. Um, and also, like I said, show you all the contents of my cachet cap. Okay, this is the sapling or yeah, sapling that I'm gonna cut down. This is, I'm gonna cut this tree down on my own property where I'm gonna go fish is state land. I don't wanna cut stuff down. You're not supposed to cut stuff down on state land. So this tree is, uh, I basically keep these so I can harvest them for different projects. So it's in, uh, a poplar tree, we call them poplars. It's a type of aspen. This is the same saw I used to do my bow drill. So we'll see how well it cuts after I've done the bow drill. I went ahead and already harvested a couple of little twigs and slid those into the loops of the saw to potentially give me a little bit more leverage. Now I'm going to go from the other way so it's a cleaner break. Okay, we have our sapling. Now I'm just going to, I could just break these off, but I kind of want a smoother cut there for my fishing line. I don't want my fishing line to get hung up on anything. So once again, I'm gonna take my saw, try not to drop the stick, and cut some of these off. Good. All right, I'm just going to keep working on it. Okay, folks, so what I'm going to do now is, so I went ahead and kind of trimmed up this sapling about as best as I could, kind of figured out about the... Uh, flexibility or lack of thereof of how much I want my fishing pole. That would depend on what species obviously is most common in your area. This I think is going to be pretty good unless I catch <laughs> uh, a huge bass or a sturgeon or something like that. But anyway, I've got my fishing pole here and I want to show you a little bit about my cachet cap and why I'm going to start making some, just some, I don't know how to describe it, not really divots, but just indentations into this sapling every so often it's going to be as i in my cachet cap i have some wire that's going to come in handy so i'm going to put one there i'll probably put one here and all i'm doing is just holding on to this saw as best i can and just going to twist and make some a minor cut just so the wire has a place to seat into the sapling so that it doesn't slide up and down and I'll see if I most of this is the bark that I'm removing but we'll see if I can get that to work which it is perfect so I'm just gonna go down the length of this about every foot and a half and make an indentation in the sapling try not to go too far so I don't compromise the strength of it anyway this is what I'm thinking about using there 
In the adventure kit, there's some brass wire. This is solid wire. They call it a snare wire. I've never opened it. I've never played with it at all. But I'm going to go ahead and open this package after I'm done making all those indentations and make eyelets in my fishing poles. All right, guys. So I've made the so the cut around the sapling here, ready to accept the wire that I hope to make eyelets out of it. I can't remember how much wire is in here, but it looks like I've got a bit. But anyway, I want to talk about this sapling. Um, generally, you're not going to find the perfect fishing pole already made for you out in the woods, but I kind of got the curvature. I want to go with the curvature of the stick so that the line does not drag against the stick. So in other words, when I put these eyelets here, I'm going to start with the most important one first, which is right here because I don't want the line going across or being interfered with at all by these branches. I don't need to trim these branches up any better. If I had a hatchet or a knife or something like that, I could make it better and then I could put the eyelets wherever I wanted to. But in this particular case, I want the eyelets facing this way. It'll still utilize the curvature of the stick, but I want it off this way and then it will bypass everything else. So I'm gonna start with this eyelet. And the first thing I need to do is open the package of this snare wire and in my trusty Wazoo survival cap, which I haven't even, it's so new to me, I haven't even memorized where I put the knife at. Uh, this, these Velcro straps on here are a map mod that I did. They have a new model now that does have sewn in Velcro. I just use the sticky on because I figure you're not really ever going to get into your hat. Once you stash these items, these are just little survival items that you don't count on as carrying. They're like last ditch things. So I don't need to get in my hat very often for that at all. But anyway, so here's the little ceramic knife. And uh, I'm going to be real careful because it's like a little razor blade. Beveled on one side. And I'm just going to open this package here real quick. Still getting better with my left hand. All right, so now we got the, perfect. Now I can put my knife away. And this is also the striker. You can use it closed. And that's the striker for the ferro rod. So anyway, we'll tuck that back in. Okay, so now, getting a feel for this wire. Okay, it's pretty fine wire, so I can see I'm going to have to probably at least double it up because I don't want this wire to break if I catch a decent sized fish, but there's a lot of it here. All right, well, we decided to move out of the den of mosquitoes and get up to our uh, patio up here, so I decided to finish the project up here. But anyway, I've got a generous amount of this snare wire, and I've doubled it up. And I've marked which direction I want the eyelet, the first eyelet. I'm going to point it up towards me. So I'm going to leave this, actually, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and cut this. And you notice I am on concrete, um, but I did grab two rocks. This is how I cut my tie wire in uh, Mongolia. I, uh, unlike a lot of guys, I do keep fingernails. I figure we're part of the animal kingdom and we don't have many defenses but fingernails for me especially my thumbs are quite strong and what I did in Mongolia is I just pinched that wire as much as possible where I wanted to cut it and I could use that rock if I wanted to and then I just use my other fingernail and bend it back if I wanted to use these rocks I could should have grabbed a heavier rock but I've done it to where I beat on the wire right there and it will break but if I just want to bend it back and forth whatever you can see that I can do it without tools let's see how hard this wire is to break seems pretty hard good grief that goes to the quality of the wazoo tie wire
Oh, that's some good tie wire. My stuff didn't take that much at all. <laughs> the stuff I took to Mongolia. Anyway, I'm going to get these ends about where they need to be. Maybe just twist the ends together just to kind of help me out a little bit there. Then I'm going to make a loop that's going to be the eye light or the eyelet rather. And this eyelet, I'm going to make a decent size. Maybe about that big. Hopefully I left myself enough. Yeah, I left myself plenty. All right, so we'll do a couple of twists there. I'm gonna try to get this as tight as possible. Just take my time. So, I don't, like I said, I don't have very good use of my left hand. So anyway, get that as tight as possible. One thing with tie wire is you want to be careful. Now this stuff is, I keep calling it tie wire, that's what we call it in, our, in my trade. Uh, this is snare wire, whatever designed to be a snare wire. But, uh, you want to be careful how much you twist it back on itself and you have to get some good grip strength that's why i can't do it with my left hand to try to get this tight but you it's not sliding you know everything seems to be good i'll uh just bend that over and that's the first of my eyelets got about this is my third eyelet Getting close. Uh oh, I lost the other end. That's what I get for working without my glasses on. Okay, so I've got my fishing pole basically done. Um, now it's time to break out the fishing line, the split shot, a couple of hooks, and I'm gonna have to break out, oops, wrong pocket, I'm gonna have to break out my knife again. Now for this, I'm gonna wanna be real careful that I don't cut the fishing line when I got my glasses out. Let's see how I can cut this. The end is melted into this here. Going real slow, trying to be careful, trying to cut this last little bit of plastic that's been melted here without, like I said, going through the fishing line and compromising it. I'm not in a rush. There's no reason to be in a rush. now I can pull it right out okay well I had a bit of extra wire and just to have a storage system for the line I went ahead and just wired a, this little branch here I'm gonna string the wire or the fishing line between here and this little area here that I grouped out with the saw and I'm just gonna do a, a tiny little jam knot I don't care how good this jam knot is or I'm not even gonna tie in a stop knot probably I'm just just something to hold the fishing line anyway there we've just jammed that on there and now I'm going to wind the line around here just for a storage system all right folks I know my river and my river is very rocky so if I take that set up and don't use a bobber I have a very good chance of losing my only two hooks or my only line whatever so 
I like to fish with a bobber at my river. So to keep with the theme of using everything natural except for my adventure kit, I've got a bobber right here that I'm going to harvest and tie this onto my line. Okay, so now it's time to open the package with the actual hooks in it and the weights. Okay, so here we have the contents of this fishing part. And I'll probably just leave this needle in here, but there's a needle in here that they say is magnetized. So if I needed to find direction and I didn't have a compass, I could potentially take this needle put it in something that floats, put it in a body of water, and let it rotate back and forth, and then it's going to show me north and south. Now, it depends on which end they magnetize as to which end will point north and south, but at least you'll know north and south. So anyway, we've got three split shot here and three hooks, and of course a couple safety pins. In my area, it's legal to use two fishing poles on the St. Croix, and depending on your area, you'd have to check this, but if I wanted to, I could potentially tie my line so that there's two hooks tied on the same line and I could put my bait between them. In this case, I'm gonna use a night crawler, so if you can imagine a worm impaled on this hook and this hook, then I would have a better chance of, of potentially hooking a fish. These are decent sized hooks. I only need to use one, and then that gives me two other chances at other fish. And I also I will say that with my adventure kit came this particular cordage. If I wanted to, instead of spooling all this fishing line on my makeshift reel here, I could have used the fishing line as a leader and then used this as my main cordage. So therefore I could have potentially used one of these hooks for an active fishing set and then two of these hooks for passive fishing methods. Back when braided line kind of first came out, a gentleman at a fishing store showed me how to tie this knot, and this is the knot that I always use. I double it up, put the end through the eye of the hook if I can get it that way. If I can't, I'll tie a different knot. So then it's just an overhand, beginning of an overhand knot. Tie that. And then put the end of the hook through the loop you just made and pull it tight. So there we go. Now I'm just gonna attach the split shot. Um, about that far up. I'm gonna put probably two split shot on there, right here. It needs to be opened up a little bit. Now, you can take a rock, push on that a little bit, make sure it doesn't fall off. Now I could have, <clears throat> with this bobber and this needle actually that's in the fishing kit, before I did all this, I could have thread the line through a portion of this bobber, maybe wrapped it around a little bit, but that would have been a very secure method of attaching this bobber. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll probably end up snapping a little bit of this off, but we have a travel or a little bit of a travel distance to our fishing spot and I don't, this is very fragile, I don't want it to break. I'll probably end up putting a half hitch at the top of this stem and a half hitch at the bottom of this stem, maybe a couple of half hitches. And that'll attach my line to this bobber and it won't go into a knot. And if I want to change the position of my bobber, it'll be really easy. All right, off to the river. Okay, well, I'm just gonna try and tie a couple of half hitches around the top and the bottom of this bobber. I've got it, it's actually a little deep. So I'm gonna slide it down. I think I've got two up 
transfer. Okay, got the bobber attached. Now all that's left is baiting my hook. <laughs> yeah, well, it's survival fishing. That's food. Yeah, that's food. I'm going to take him home and uh, um, take pictures of him, get measurements, get him mounted, and then we're going to eat him. All right. Survival fishing. Let's get this little guy back in the water. There he goes. It worked. Ooh, that's a better one. <laughs> Even though it's still really tiny. There we go. Okay, little guy. Video's done.